Hi everyone! Today we are going to be learning about Camera Crista fasciculata on the chalk screen, otherwise known as golden cassia, locust weed, sleeping plant, and the showy partridge pea. For the sake of today's video, we are going to just be referring to it as partridge pea. Partridge pea is a herbaceous annual plant that can grow in dense stands and can grow to be about 0.15 to 0.91 meters tall. However, it is commonly found at about 0.61 meters or about 2 feet tall. This species is a valuable food source for wildlife, especially birds and mammals, such as the northern bobwhite quail, the greater and lesser prairie chickens, and the field mouse. Deer can also benefit from this plant as a food source. However, livestock on the other hand may die if they eat large quantities of the partridge pea due to a cathartic substance that's present in the leaves and the seeds of this plant. Partridge pea is a legume and a common trait of legumes is the ability to fixate atmospheric nitrogen into a form that is usable to plants. This species is known to have a high rate of nitrogen fixation, which hits its peak when the plant is flowering. If we take a look at a distribution map of partridge pea across North America, we'll see that partridge pea is native to the central and eastern United States, as well as parts of Canada. However, it can be invasive in certain ecosystems, especially those in Canada. This species should be monitored after planting so that it doesn't become an issue. Speaking of which, if you're looking to add partridge pea to your landscape, then hardiness zones 3 through 9 are ideal for growing it. Now, besides intentional plantings, partridge pea is known to do well in disturbed sites such as ditches and old fields. Partridge pea is also known to perform pretty well in open sunny habitats such as prairies, specifically ones that have dry sandy loamy soil. Partridge pea can also be found in wetlands and on riverbanks, which is interesting because it has a low water requirement. However, it does do well in areas that are disturbed and wetlands and riverbanks get disturbed quite frequently with floods. Now, if we take a look at the stem of a partridge pea, we'll see that it is alternate and the stem is slightly pubescent. Also, you may notice something weird on the petioles of the leaves. Those dark round things are glands. The flowers of partridge pea don't actually supply nectar, those glands do. Their main function is to attract defensive insects that will fight off herbivorous insects. I was able to catch some ants visiting the glands on a partridge pea that I was looking at. Now if we turn our attention to the leaves of this species, we'll see that they are pinnately compound and each leaf has 5 to 18 leaflet pairs per leaf that consist of two small oval shaped leaflets with a point at the top. Alright, now the flowers of a partridge pea generally bloom June to October and when they do they form an inflorescence of perfect yellow flowers. Each flower will have five green sepals, five yellow petals with red at the base, 10 reddish brown stamen, and one long pale yellowish green carpel. These beautiful flowers are pollinated by bees, flies, and ants. After pollination takes place, a hairy green pod will form typically around July, and by August, the seed pod is much darker and dry. So it is able to split open and disperse the eight to 15 seeds that might be inside. The seeds themselves are black, shiny, and dispersed by mammals and birds that may have eaten them. Also, partridge pea is known to increase in abundance after a fire and decrease if there is a lack of fire. Alrighty, that is all for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about Camacrista fasciculata, otherwise known as the partridge pea with me. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in my next video.